Democracy in America, the best form of government, or is it? The founders didn't necessarily think so. They thought that the ordinary American didn't have the ability to make informed decisions about governing, and a governing class had to be trusted to do this. So in America, we have our own philosophy of democratic theory. Our traditional democratic theory is five key principles, and the number one is equality in voting. One person, one vote. Number two is effective participation, adequate and equal opportunity to express their preferences in government policy. Enlightened understanding, a society must be a marketplace of ideas, free press, free speech, and no monopoly of information. Citizen control of the agenda. If one group has too much control, then the government probably won't address issues that help all of society. And inclusion, open citizenship and rights extended to all. Now, if all of these are met, then majority rule should win out. But what if it infringes on minority rights? That is when the majority rule doesn't work. Example is if the majority of Americans decided that women couldn't vote. That wouldn't be fair, now would it? Or would it? Now, there are three theories about American democracy about who has power and influence. In other words, who is really in charge? And theory one is pluralism. The idea that groups, interest groups, have a strong amount of influence by pressing their beliefs on representatives and candidates. Do I hear dollar signs? Groups are a good way to participate. Alexis de Tocqueville called us a nation of joiners way back in the 1830s. Now, groups do represent its members and typically have a lot of money to throw around and on lobbyists and mass mailings and campaign donations. Problems with this form of participation, it's too easy. Rather than call up your congressman or congresswoman, or joining a community organization, or even voting, many Americans write a check to the AARP or the NRA, and then rely on interest groups to speak on their behalf. Now elitism. This theory focuses on economic class lines, and that the upper class really has more control of the government. Wealth is the basis of power. Over one-third of the nation's wealth is held by 1% of the population. Elite and class theory proponents argue that the wealthy can afford to finance election campaigns and control some of the key institutions, like corporations, and generally have more access to elected officials. The main idea of the elitism theory is that big business has more government access and can persuade policymakers to create policy that benefits them. Now, theory three is hyperpluralism. It's a much more negative view of pluralism, and this theory contends that the groups that people join are oftentimes so powerful they can actually cripple the government's ability to act responsibly. Powerful interest groups can fragment the government to the point where nothing is accomplished for the public good. And challenges to democracy, not just ours. Increased complexity of issues. Society has become more complex and thus has made it difficult for the average citizen to really know anything. Yeah, and limited participation in government. If most people don't care about the government's actions or inaction, then problems arise. Lack of accountability or simply bad governing can occur. Escalating campaign costs. Candidates, in order to get elected, need money. And so many rely on PACs, political action committees, and get that money to fund their campaign. The need for donors could skew a candidate's values. And then there's diverse political interests. Gridlock. So with so many diverse political interests and goals and dollars, government can get to the point where nothing gets done and nobody is happy. Nobody happy.